Janmad Yasya Yato Nibiyad Karatas Arte Suavidya Swarat Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikavaye Muyantiat Surayaha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisago Mesha Damna Srena Sada Nirasta Kuhukam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes, of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe, he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Vutra Aramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mur Imad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Prader Ishwaraha Sadyo Hidi Aburidite Tra Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam sukhamukad amrita dravya samyutam ibata bhagavatam rasam alayam O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. 
although its nectar and juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ediantaksto Hibadrani Vidu Noti Srihitsatam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies a devotee who continually engages in hearing about him. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Okay, I'm sorry. Nasta Presu Bhajesu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Sloke, Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. His dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo tamalo badayas chayi chaitere tara navidam stitvam satve prasiddhati By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavad bhakti yogitaha Bhagavad tattva vigyanam Mukta sangha shijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasamasaya shiyante chasya karmani drista evat manishwari Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 37. Yudhisthiras tat parisar panam buddha Pure Jarastre Chagrihe Tatat Mani. Vibhav Yelo Ban Rita Jin Mahim Sanadi. Adam Chakram Gamanaya Parya Dat. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj Yudhisthira was intelligent enough to understand the influence of the age of Kali, characterized by increasing avarice, falsehood, cheating, and violence throughout the capital, state, 
home and among individuals. So he wisely prepared himself to leave home, and he dressed accordingly. Purport by his divine grace, Isibhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. The present age is influenced by the specific qualities of Kali. Since the days of the Battle of Kurukshetra, about 5,000 years ago, the influence of the age of Kali began manifesting, and from authentic scriptures, it is learned that the age of Kali is still to run for 427,000 years. The symptoms of the Kali Yuga as mentioned above, namely avarice, falsehood, diplomacy, cheating, nepotism, violence, and all such things are already in vogue. And no one can imagine what is going to happen gradually with further increase of the influence of Kali till the day of annihilation. We have already come to know that the influence of the age of Kali is meant for godless, so-called civilized man. Those who are under the protection of the Lord have nothing to fear from this horrible age. Maharaj Yudhisthira was a great devotee of the Lord. And there was no necessity of being afraid of the age of Kali. But he preferred to retire from active household life and prepare himself to go back home, back to Godhead. The Pandavas are eternal companions of the Lord, and therefore they are more interested in the company of the Lord than anything else. Besides that, being an ideal king, Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to retire just to set an example for others. As soon as there is some young fellow to look after the household affairs, one should at once retire from family life to uplift oneself to spiritual realization. One should not rot in the dark well of household life till one is dragged out by the will of Yamaraj. Modern politicians should take lessons from Maharaj Yudhisthira about voluntary retirement from active life and should make room for the younger generation. Also retired old gentlemen should take lessons from him and leave home for spiritual realization before forcibly dragged away to meet death. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Bodo Primanandi well, when it says Maharaj Yudhisthira was intelligent enough. So what is the difference between intelligence and the mind? Well, the mind receives the, the experiences or impressions of the other senses. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin. And makes a quick, let's say, decision or differentiation based on uh, sensual or, let's see, no, sensuous perception. In other words, the mind will accept and reject things uh, based on uh, mostly bodily concerns and store this as a memory as a memory bank. And the intelligence is more deliberative. And intelligence has the ability not to be influenced by emotion, but to think more deeply about whether something is, whether something experienced is good or bad. The mind will quickly accept and reject. The intelligence if it's properly functioning, will think more carefully and on, on, on the basis, and should be on the basis of higher criterions. I mean, the highest criterion is, is, is this beneficial for Krishna consciousness or is it not beneficial? But the mind will just quickly accept or reject something based on emotions, sensitivity, or sensuous uh, considerations, not based 
not usually based on higher considerations. Therefore, people that are on the mental platform, uh, or, or as Prabhupada says, hovering on the mental platform, uh, they never understand things correctly. This, of course, is a diverse. It's quoted in the first chapter. Bhagavad Gita. Swadi Kalatradi Su. I'm sorry. Yeah, Swadi Kalatradi Su. Om Na Ichna Di. Yatirta Salile Kalile Nakarasis Janesha Vijesu Saeva Bokara. So when it says. Um, It's, uh, that the uh, mind is on the on the on the men uh, that one is on the mental platform because they are attached to the body, to the place of birth, uh, and to uh, and sense gratification, and they go to places of pilgrimage just to take a bath and not to take instructions from bona fide uh, gurus. Uh, so in this way, uh, they misunderstand completely what is the purpose of life. Yeah, so this is also quoted. Yeah, 208, I'm sorry. Let me just find that. So, what is this mental platform? A human being who identifies this body made of three elements with his self, who considers the byproducts of the body to be his kinsmen, who considers the land of birth worshipable, and who goes to a place of pilgrimage simply to take a bath rather than meet men of transcendental knowledge there, is to be considered like an ass or a cow. Uh, so, Uh, this hovering on the mental platform. Like maybe I got the wrong verse. Let's see. Yes. Uh, look at that. Yes. Yes. The Bhakti Bhagavat Yakinchina Sarvir Gunais Tata Samasate Sura Harava Bhakta Shakuto Maha Guna Mano Ratanasati. How do I? Yeah, this is the verse. So one who has unflinching devotion for the personality of God has all the good qualities of demigods, but one who is not a devotee of the Lord has only material qualifications that are of little value. This is because he's hovering on the mental plane and is certain to be attracted by the glaring material energy. So that mental plane, and it is sensuous, not sensual, but sensuous, meaning it's involved with the senses and the perception of the senses without any superior judgment. And therefore, it accepts and rejects basically on the, uh, on the criterion of sensuous uh, pleasure or displeasure. And therefore, uh, such people, uh, are, although they might seem moral in some ways, they might seem organized in some ways, they're actually... Uh, not good. Whereas a devotee who uh, has spiritual intelligence and is not swayed by sensuous experiences uh, makes decisions based on is this favorable for Krishna consciousness or is it unfavorable? So that that is that is the spiritual uh, let's call it the intel the spiritual intellectual. Uh, criterion uh, that the devotee uses. Whereas the materialist, even though they may be organized, even though they may be intelligent, but they're making decisions on the mental level, mental platform, and uh, they're usually wrong. So this is a hard point to understand 
for most people because they say, well, devotees are like this and like that, but some people are you know, organized, they're regulated, they have a lot of money, they dress nicely, they speak nicely, they go to church. Yeah, but they also eat meat and they sometimes engage in all kinds of uh, sensuality and uh, sense gratification and so forth. So although they look good, they sound good, but they're no good. Now, this is a hard thing for most people to understand. Uh, now, are there devotees that are uh, not uh, to the standard? Yes. But a devotee who's living on the standard, and the standard is what? Is what? Anukuliyasya sankalpa pratikuliyasya varjanam. They accept everything favorable for Krishna consciousness and reject everything unfavorable for Krishna consciousness. And they remain humble and meek in performing their devotional service. They consider Krishna their only refuge and only protector. And they don't rely on other, uh, let's say, lesser uh, protectors, uh, such as politicians or family members, etc. And they... Uh, don't have any interest outside of Krishna consciousness. And, and they accept everything that happens as the mercy of Krishna. And of course, they remain humble and meek in the execution of devotional service. So, uh, if we want to understand Maharaj Yudhisthira, he's on this level of you know, doing only those things that are pleasing to Krishna and rejecting those things that are not pleasing to Krishna. Therefore, he's intelligent enough to understand the influence of the age of Kali, characterized by increasing avarice, meaning greed, falsehood, cheating, and violence throughout the capital, state, home, and among individuals. That's what we're seeing today also, because we're in the, in the grip of Kali Yuga, and we're seeing a de practical demonstration of it today. And it's been going on for 5,000 years, and it's getting, going to get worse and worse, unless we do something about it. So there's increasing avarice, greed. Yeah, when you have people that have billions of dollars, and they're trying to get more money, and more power, and more influence, and more of this, and more of that. And there's falsehood. Yeah, learning about Darwinism in school, that's a falsehood. Uh, learning about the Big Bang as the origin of creation, that's a falsehood. And learning about uh, sexology uh, as if that's the purpose of life, that's another falsehood. So, uh, and that leads to cheating and violence. So, uh, Maharaj Yudhisthira, he wisely prepared himself to leave home and he dressed accordingly. Well, when we see all these symptoms of Kali Yuga, what should be our reaction to it? Well, Prabhupada says, uh, those who are under the protection of the Lord have nothing to fear from this horrible age. Now, that's a big statement because so many people are fearful today. What's going to happen? There's this election coming up. There's the COVID. And now we can't even breathe the air because the, you know, there's fires and there's smoke everywhere. People are losing their jobs. There's rioting on the streets and buildings are being burned. Cars are burned. And police are killing people. People are killing the police. They're defunding the police. If I call the police, they won't come because they don't have enough money to pay, put gas in the, in the car to drive. What am I going to do? Well, Prabhupada says, those who are under the protection of the Lord have nothing to fear from this horrible age. Now, do we believe this or we don't believe it? Uh, this is interesting. What, what's interesting is because of this Chinese flu, all of a sudden things that we were talking about that seemed impossible now have become possible. Like, for example, we're saying you have to homeschool your kids. And everyone said, no, it's not possible. We can't do that. You know, Harvey Lust doesn't know what he's talking about. But yet, now the kids are at home all day long. <laughs> and 
And still, you don't want to homeschool them because you're still using the K-12 curriculum and whatever. But, you know, uh, it becomes something that's possible now. Although before, maybe a couple of months ago, he said, no, it's not possible. You know, Harry Veloz doesn't know what he's talking about. You see? <laughs> and then there's other things, too. You know, the, the fact that, you know, uh, companies are realizing we don't really need all these office buildings. We don't need, you know, cafeterias and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Mayuri, you know, serving uh, Indian food and the Chinese guy serving Chinese, you know. People could just stay at home and do their work. In fact, they're seeing if, they're, if their things are organized, they, work, they have to work harder at home than they do in the office. And they don't have to, you know, drive to the office and drive back and then use the toilet in the office and use this thing and that thing and, you know, have HR. Uh, you can avoid all those things. And, and all these offices, like Microsoft's building this huge new office uh, complex costing $5 billion, and their, and their CEO just said, well, we're going to go forward with it and finish it. But what happens if, if uh, you know, two years from now, COVID is still around, and uh, no one's using the offices, you see? So uh, this... It, when when you have a big company, it's very difficult to quickly adapt to changes. Small companies can quickly adapt. The big companies, it's almost impossible for them to quickly react to changing situations. Uh, so we see that what seemed impossible of just a few months ago is is what we're doing now. It is possible. So therefore. Those who are under the protection of the Lord have nothing to fear from this horrible age. Let's think about that. Are we actually under the protection of the Lord or are we not? If we're not, then we have a lot to worry about. If we are, then we don't have to worry so much. Well, what does it mean to be under the protection of the Lord? Well, uh, Prabhupada said that devotee means they follow strictly the regulative principles. That's what a devotee means. So are we strictly following the, re the regulative principles that we should analyze on a, on a daily basis? Because every day we have to make decisions whether to follow or not. And follow either integrally or partially. Like one can say, well, when I'm in a temple, I'm thinking of Krishna, I'm doing some service, I can, I'm chanting my rounds. But when I go home, uh, other thoughts come into my mind, and uh, uh, sometimes I completely forget Krishna because I get so involved in these things. And well, see, this is the issue. Can we map out in a little journal how many hours we actually are Krishna conscious, and how many hours of the day we are not Krishna conscious? We have to think about these things uh, because. Uh, so this verse says that, uh, O Arjuna, at all times, remember me and perform your duty. With your mind and intelligence fixed on me, surely you will come back to me. That's Bhagavad Gita, 8th chapter, verse number... Verse number eight, is it? Let's see. Seven. Mom, if I see a samsaya, surely you'll come back to me. Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting with your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me. You will attain me without doubt. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, this instruction to Arjuna is very important for all men or all persons engaged in material activities. The Lord does not say that one should give up his prescribed duties or engagements. One can continue them and at the same time think of Krishna by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. This will free one from material contamination and engage the mind and intelligence in Krishna. By chanting Krishna's names, 
one will be transferred to the spiritual planet Krishna Loka without a doubt. So, when in doubt, chant Hare Krishna. If you're doubtful that, well, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, and I feel as if my mind is just uh, going away completely from Krishna. So what you to do, when in doubt, chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, because Prabhupada says, Manmana Bhakta Madbad, Manmana Bhakta Mad Bhakta Madhyajimam Namaskru, Mam Ivaisasi Satyam Te Pratijane Priyosam. This is the description of a devotee. Always think of Krishna. Become his devotee. Manmana Bhakta Mad Bhakta, Manmana Bhava Mad Bhakta, Madhyaji, worship the Lord. And Mam. Uh, namaskuru, offer your homage and respect. You know, just like it says, at least three times a day, I should remember the spiritual master. And without pleasing uh, uh, the spiritual master, one cannot get the mercy of Krishna. And without uh, and without pleasing the spiritual master, it's impossible to get the mercy of Krishna. So all these things should be remembered, and but simply by chanting Hare Krishna, these things come back into the memory. So this is uh, what it means to be, as Prabhupada says, uh, under the protection of the Lord. This remembrance of the Lord, remembrance and instructions of Guru and Krishna is, means that you are, going, you are protected by the Lord. So then... Uh, it says, there is no necessity of being afraid of the age of Kali. But in the case of Maharaj Yudhisthira, he decided to retire from household life and prepare himself to go back home, back to Godhead. Well, yeah, once, once your children are grown, they're married or settled in their careers, whatever, and hopefully they're Krishna conscious, then you have to think about now I have to do something and go back to Godhead. Just like I was talking to a gentleman uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was explaining to me how he wanted to buy uh, a big house in uh, Bellevue. Well, he's already living in a big house, but in Novelty Hill. <laughs> so I said to him, look, I said, Prabhu, I said, you're, you're at the age where you can retire. You have enough money to retire and not work anymore. Why are you thinking about buying a big house in Bellevue? I said, at least a novelty here, Hill, you're not going to have, you know, Black Lives Matter, uh, no justice, no peace. You know, they're not going to be burning down your house in Novelty Hill. But if you get a big house in Bellevue, it could very easily get burned down. <laughs> I said, uh, if once they finish in Seattle, they're going to come to Bellevue. You know, they're not going to come to Novelty Hill right away. You know, you, you're safer there. He said, no, no, I need a big house in Bellevue. I said, well, you have to think about your future also. And then he looked at me when I said that. He understood what I was saying, right? He, he understood I'm going to go to Krishna consciousness now. You have to think about your future. But he avoided it. He just avoided the whole thing. And then, and then he quickly, uh, you know, stopped or discussion and went away so yeah we have to think about the future you know if, if someone is you know 59 or 60 years old already has plenty of money already has a big house you know you have to think about the future at any time you could die and what what's your preparation for that so here Maharaj Yudhisthira while he's still sound of mind and body and already there's someone who can take over, you know, let the younger generation take over. Why do you have to die with your boots on, you know? Just like these politicians, they die right up to the last second. They, they, they stay in their politics right up to the last minute, you know, like Gandhi and Nehru, all these people, you know, right to the last minute, and then they die, right? So that, that should not, we should follow the example of Maharaj Yudhisthira. So it says, the Pandavas are eternal companions of the Lord, and therefore they are more interested in the company of the Lord than anything else. Ah, so that should be our striving. 
to be more interested in the company of the Lord than anything else. And besides that, being an ideal king, Maharaj Yunusir wanted to retire just to set an example for others. Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to retire just to set an example for others. As soon as there is some young fellow to look after the household affairs, one should at once retire from family life to uplift oneself to spiritual realization. There you are. That's, that's the natural flow of a Krishna conscious life. One should not rot in the dark well of household life so one is dragged out by the will of Yamaraj. Just look what that's saying. It's like, oh my God, it's horrible, right? Dragged out by the will of Yamaraj. Modern politicians should take lessons from Maharaj Yudhisthira about voluntary retirement from active life and should make room for the younger generation. Also, retired, retired old gentlemen should take lessons from him, meaning Maharaj Yudhisthira, and leave home for spiritual realization before forcibly dragged away to meet death. So let's think about these things. This is uh, the Vedic system of uh, life. And uh, devotees should be more interested in Krishna than anything else. And should be prepare their whole life to go back to Godhead, not just you know the last two, two or three minutes of your life. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Are there any questions? Yeah, and it's just paper. It's just pieces of paper. You know, real wealth is cows, land, and grains. Right, that's real wealth. Paper money, any time it could it could collapse, and and there have been many examples of it where the value of the money collapses. Like in Germany, you had to have a wheelbarrow to bring hundreds and millions of Deutschmarks to buy a piece of bread. That was after World War One. The whole economy collapsed. <laughs> You have to have a wheelbarrow like this. You go down the street to buy bread. And the wheelbarrow was full of German marks. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's right. How much does that cost? Four chip bodies. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, I mean, if you're able to earn so much money, you should use it in Krishna's service. Then, then it has some value. But if you just hoard it and use some of it for sense gratification, that's extreme arrogance and ignorance. You know, extreme arrogance and ignorance. It's better not to have much money because if you have a lot of money, people get jealous and then thieves, they find out, they'll come and rob you. And yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Mighty bull. Big Maya. Hare Krishna. Prabhupada's purports make it clear. Without the purport, it's not never really sure.